You can talk Sanders and O'Malley all you want, but Hillary Clinton remains the target for Republicans as we head for caucus season. And even though some people say an indictment is near, she shows zero fear. Why can't anybody make her lies stick once and for all? The numbers in various polls sweep across America and seem to change on a daily whim. Even in Iowa, where we are told they will set a tone that could be insurmountable, it seems. Well, they move on various candidates for no reason whatsoever, so let's go to ground in Iowa and get the facts about these polls. Texas has become a ground zero in the fight against Planned Parenthood. Those who claim to be exposing crimes at the agency are now under indictment. And the people in the Lone Star State are furious. But are they right in their anger? And when it comes to real anger, the gloves are off with regard to six white high schoolers who apparently have been taught to be racist for their parents. Telling it like it is holds up the real culprits. So get in, sit down, and hold on. I'm Ed Berliner in the hard line for Tuesday. January the 26th begins right now. So I know in order to deal the pro with the problems I want to, to get the economy working, creating more good jobs, getting incomes rising, making sure we build on the Affordable Care Act, get costs down but improve it, get to 100% coverage, everything I want to do. I want to start from the belief that we can find common ground. Hillary Clinton remains all spit and fight as every candidate should, especially when they see their support waning and people asking too many questions. But no matter how much she puffs out her considerable war chest and shakes her cold iron fist at the opposition, she may be about to face an opponent that will show no bargaining, won't care what the polls say, and doesn't give a damn about where she waffles on issues. The word is a simple one, indictment. But what makes anybody believe it will stick this time when such investigations have come up short far too many times in the past? Our first guest, a veteran of Desert Storm in Kosovo, now a retired Army colonel and noted attorney in Southern California, Kurt Schlichter, joined by the investigative reporter for the Washington Examiner, Sarah Westwood. I want to thank you both for being here because we have a lot of business to do here. Kurt, let's go ahead and get to you first. Yesterday, right here on Newsmax, former Congressman Tom DeLay said that the FBI had enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton over her unsecured private email server. Here's what he said. I have friends that are in the FBI, and they tell me they're ready, they're ready to indict. They're ready to recommend an indictment. Uh, and they also say that uh, if, if the attorney general does not indict, they're going public. Kurt, let's get to you on the legal side of things here. When you hear those words that they are ready to indict, what do they have? What would they have at that point if indeed they're on the cusp? Well, Ed, I think what they would have when this Justice Department is ever going for manifest guilt of uh, you know. The I tell you what, Kurt, we're going to go ahead and get you on phone if we can or take care of this transmission because we're losing you a little bit here. Sarah, let me come to you right now. Hillary Clinton has told people time and time again she's got She's innocent, there's nothing there, and she seems completely unworried. But if indeed this is true, don't you know that she has got to be concerned? The bluster's got to stop and she's got to go into damage control because this could derail everything. She certainly is aware that this is a growing problem. She's been forced to confront it again and again. And at the beginning when this first emerged back in March of last year, which it's hard to believe that's almost a year ago, she refused to take questions about it. She refused to even acknowledge that this was a problem. Now she knows that this is something that's troubling in voters' eyes, and you've seen her sort of shift her tone on it. She's willing to uh, take the time to explain to voters during her events what went on to explain her version, at least, of, of why she thinks she didn't do anything wrong. Isn't that just and it, so though, Sarah? Doesn't she need to dig in right now? If she's going to start some sort of explanation now, she's got to get right to this. Because if, indeed, there is something really there, when you back up and somebody gets... you got to get ahead of a problem like this, and it shows either she really believes she's innocent or incredible arrogance. Well, she does have an explanation, and it, it might not be a very good one, and voters might not be buying it. But what she's saying is that nothing she sent or received was marked classified at the time. 
So she's arguing that because the information wasn't stamped with a big red confidential across the top of it, that she wasn't responsible for handling it the same way she would if something bore the traditional classification markings. That wouldn't necessarily hold up in a court of law, but in the court of public opinion, it, she seems to be doing just fine. Her poll numbers have rebounded from when they slipped earlier this summer. And so she's sticking with that explanation, even in the face of evidence that contradicts it, which we've seen in the past few weeks. All right, let's talk about that. Kurt Schlichter, we've got you back now. You're on telephone with us. So let me get right back to where we were at the beginning. What, in your opinion, would be needed to be on the cusp of an indictment? But then again, I also want to point out, you wrote an article, how Hillary got classified information onto her private email. And as you look at this, and what you even wrote yourself, Kurt, you're saying that she gets an email, she, unless she is transcendently stupid, she sees that it is sensitive material, correct? Oh, a absolutely. Let's, let's be really clear. Ed. There's no legitimate dispute that what she did constitutes a felony. None. It's not even close. Then why? Okay, well, Kurt, I've got to stop you there then. If indeed, in your opinion and the opinion of others, there is absolutely no doubt that that's it's a felony, why has she not been arrested yet or at least indicted? Because the Obama uh, Justice Department is a corrupt sham. And there's no other reason. Look, this is not even a close call. Okay, it's, it, it's very clear from the uh, reports we've heard that somebody went on one classified system, somehow removed the uh, uh, classified material from that system, and transposed it into a second unclassified system, creating all sorts of felonies just by that act. Now, I was a 27-year Army colonel. I had a high clearance. Uh, I'm also a trial lawyer. This is not even close. This is not even, even remotely in question that if they found that classified material on her system, she is wrong under at least 18 United States Code. Then uh, there's no doubt, in your, no doubt in your mind whatsoever, without any question, that the Attorney General, the Obama administration, that this is some sort of a conspiracy here, whatever. And I, believe me, I'm not the first guy to use the conspiracy word that easily, Kurt. But what you're telling us here is, no doubt, they are making sure that Mrs. Clinton does not get indicted. They are protecting her. And our federal government and the administration itself is just as guilty as she is. I know I'm taking it a long way here, but that's what it's beginning to sound like. Why wouldn't they? I mean, did they prosecute anybody in the IRS scandals, anybody in any of the EPA scandals? Uh, no, and, and they won't because this is a political ally. And the problem, Ed, a real problem for our society is we're developing two sets of rules, two sets of laws, one for friends of the administration, which are very, very loose, and one for everyone else. I mean, for God's sake, look at, look at what's happening down in uh, Texas. You have a couple of guys getting a, uh, a felony charge for essentially using a fake ID. Uh-oh, watch out. Every college kid in America's busted. Sarah, let me come to you then from a reporter's standpoint, because Kurt is somebody who has been there. Other people who have been there, they watch this. They are serious attorneys. Now let's talk about serious journalism here. Don't we all have to dig in here? Don't we have to then, not just the Republicans themselves, but as the media doesn't behoove us at this point to dig in and say, Mrs. Clinton and President Obama and everybody else, this is the problem. You've got a trail here, and there's no doubt on anybody's mind you should be indicted. To the media's credit, they haven't let this story die. Even mainstream reporters, to a lesser extent than right-leaning reporters, have continued to ask her this question on the campaign trail and in televised interviews. It's as far as the Department of Justice goes, it is entirely possible that she escapes prosecution because the stakes are so much higher than in any of the cases that you mentioned before, the EPA case, the IRS case. Now we're talking about the future of the Democratic Party and the next eight years, who's going to live in the White House. So when the stakes are that high, you're dealing with another set of rules and you've seen the Clintons sort of evade trouble for decades. So uh, from a skeptic's point of view... Hillary Clinton might not face indictment, but in the court of public opinion, she's going to have some struggles because while this might not be bothering Democratic primary voters, it's really going to haunt her in the general election. I've got a minute left here. Kurt, we're talking about haunting her. Let's be honest here. She is not really under FBI investigation, according to those who have looked. It is not a criminal investigation. But when do we get to that point? What's going to be that snap? that's going to get this out, and this is going to say that somebody in the FBI is going to say, we got it, it's a criminal investigation, this is what it is, what's it going to take? 
It's going to come down to uh, FBI Director James Comey and whether he's an honorable man with personal uh, dignity and self-respect or whether he's just another hack politician in it for his own power. And isn't because it... he, needs to go pre- he needs to present his case to the Department of Justice, and if it justifies an indictment and the DOJ sits on it, he needs to walk in, resign, walk out to a microphone and explain, I will not be part of this. Okay, 20 seconds here. If indeed Hillary Clinton becomes the Democratic nominee, what could the GOP do legally? Nothing. (laughs) Nothing. Can't file anything, can't go after her. I want to make that very clear here. It's not like you can go after her or any reason for this. You can't do anything. This has got to come from the top. uh, uh, The the judicial question has to come from the Department of Justice and a prosecutor. Uh, The political question comes from the voters. What are we willing to tolerate? And that means the Obama administration. Kurt Schlichter, Sarah Westwood, I want to thank you both for joining us because this is explosive and it has only really just begun. Stay with us. Does anyone really know what drives the political numbers in Iowa? We'll talk about that next on The Hardline.